Well, hello everybody. It's Rob Z from RobZTraining.com, and on today's video blog post, I wanted to feature something that us teachers have to deal with a lot, and that is stuff we don't like called paperwork. Now, there might be a way to convert the paper form, such as this one here is a, a student update form. It asks you information like give the students effort, are they prepared for class, rate their behavior, rate their attendance. There's a bunch of check boxes on it, and I'm thinking, yes, I could fill this out. Maybe take five to ten minutes to do. But even quicker would be if there was a digital form that could be filled out. And I think a lot of people are really not familiar with Google Forms and how awesome that has been over the past couple of years as Google keeps making it better and better and better, not only for making forms, but for taking them as well. And it's completely free to do. So if you're in a Google App School like I am as a teacher, uh, this is already built into the whole Gmail and, and Google ecosystem that you might already have access to. So let's take a look at how we can throw together a form nice and quickly using Google Drive. We're going to start off here at the Create button and we shall go to Form. Now you might consider these surveys too. A lot of people know about SurveyMonkey. That's a paid service that you use. Um, I'm a big fan of using Google Forms instead and it's also uh, a free option too. So first off is they want you to pick a type of a form. Let's just say I want to pick a uh, this blue one right here. So I'll click that and I'll give it a name and I'll call it my Sample123 and hit OK. So now we go ahead and we build our questions. First question might be, like on my form here it says, uh, is student prepared for class? So I'll put this in as one of those uh, open-ended response type questions. So is student prepared for class? You could put in a little helpful text like please be precise about Monday through Tuesday or if there was more specific information. It's optional though so you don't have to do that and I want to make this one a paragraph text so the person could put in a paragraph or so of information. Now you even have some fancy extras here like data validation. You could say let the person only type in text and maybe I want it to be at least a hundred words. You know that's in this case I don't really need to do it but I just wanted to point that out to you so you know that it's there. Now if you want the person to make sure they answer it and not leave it blank you go ahead and check the box make sure it's a required question and blue button done. And there it is. Now I've made a one question uh, survey or quiz right now, or poll if you will. Let's take a look at what it looks like before I go any further. So up at the top here you can see it says view live form. We'll go ahead and click it. Opens up in a new tab and here, here, was, here it is right now what it looks like. I should point out this looks equally as good on a tablet, on a small mobile screen like an iPhone, and also on a full-size desktop or laptop. So Google does the work to make sure it looks right no matter what device your user is using to put the information in. So that's kind of handy, especially for when people are using the little small screens like on iPhones. So I'm going to go back to our form here and add the next question. This one I'm going to make more of a checkbox, so it's an, a really quick one to answer. So I'm going to add an item. I click on the button. And instead of it being text, it's going to be multiple choice. And in this case, it's going to be is student receiving extra help. And this is going to be just a yes or no. Let's erase that and make it required and I'm done. So now let's see what that looks like. Very simply, yes or no. So I think you get the idea. You can build your questions like I've been doing here with a variety of different question types. As you can see, there's a lot of them to choose from. Uh, but the basics are paragraph text, multiple choice, and check boxes. And you would build your uh, survey like so. Now, in a school environment like mine, where everybody is tied in through Gmail, you can do this even simpler. You can see right here it says send form. Well, I can hit send form, and I can put the names of the people that should receive this. So Mrs. Smith, Mr. Jones, and so forth. Or complete buildings like middle school building or high school clerical or whatever the case may be. But if you aren't going to send it internally like so, uh, like I just mentioned, up at the top where it says View Live Form, the link you'll get at the top, the URL, which is actually out of view right now, let me move that down. This link right here, this is the link that you would just copy and paste right into an email. So that's so far how you make it. We haven't looked at what the results look like, so I want to go back and show you here. I have to take it though first, so let's say I give a, some text here just real quickly submit so now there's something to look at okay 
what I want to do now is take you here where it says view responses and you can see we have one that's the one I just put in now I click on that and it's going to bring up a spreadsheet Now this is really nice because spreadsheets are searchable and you can organize them nicely by sorting by column you could say show me the newest ones at the top or show me period 8 at the top or whatever the case may be so each one you could see automatically put in the timestamp and put in the text that was entered assuming that was real text of course and it keeps track for you right on this uh, spreadsheet so I, I like how it does that so there's some other fancy things you can do you can change that look if you want a different color um, you can turn the form on or off up here but these are just kind of the basic uh, uh, features that you have within creating your forms. So instead of doing it the analog, old-fashioned, traditional way on paper, which does have its advantages, I'll admit, sometimes it's easier to just write something and hand it in. But I'm thinking on the, the end of the collector, the person that has maybe 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 of these pieces of paper that they have to weed through and hopefully understand the people's handwriting. I'm guilty of that with the, the non-legible handwriting. This way, instead of looking at it on paper forms, they can look at one spreadsheet with all the information and data collected quite easily. And if the person filling this out, me in particular, likes doing it electronically, it might actually be a little bit of an added incentive to do things electronically this way so that you get quicker responses back and maybe even more participation if it's one of those optional type of uh, activities to do. So I hope today's blog post was helpful, all about using Google Forms. Check that out if you go to drive.google.com. This has been Rob Z from robztraining.com. Thanks for watching.